Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I am the CHALL, and welcome to Finish Your FM, your visual wrestling podcast. You'll have noticed we've made a change to the name. Uh, Owen, welcome. Yeah, but it, welcome, welcome everyone to Finish Your FM, a brand new name for this podcast. It's been a joy doing this so far, and now I can't wait to do this under a new name, talking about some of the best in professional wrestling all over the world in all promotions, not just the big ones. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to have a fun packed show every single week. Um, so for those who don't know that are just tuning in for the first time, we used to be called the WWE show for a few episodes. Uh, but we decided to make this change because we want to we want to talk about more than just WWE. Uh, so how this is going to work now is basically instead of doing full in-depth reviews of all the segments on every single show, uh, from the from the seven days, which will take forever. We're going to pick five headlines from the world of wrestling. We're going to talk about them in detail. Uh, it could be contract negotiations. It could be highlights from the shows. It could be um, it could be special appearances. It could be it could be anything. It could be five just five random major headlines from the world of professional wrestling this week. Uh, we're also going to have a little dibble dabble into other mini headlines as well as part of that and we're also going to have a section called indie spotlight which is highlighting each of us will highlight one each an independent wrestler on the indie scene either an underrated superstar wrestler or a up-and-coming star and we're going to highlight them and give them the spotlight they deserve which is why it's called indie spotlight Uh, so it's going to be a sort of 30 minute to an hour show every week uh, like it usually always is but um, that got a bit more of a structure to it uh, now. So with this one, it's an NXT Roblox special. Uh, there is no indie spotlight this week because we just announced the change uh, tonight. But we are going to be uh, utilizing this opportunity now for the next seven days. To, well, the next few days, sorry, before the next show, which will come out on the Thursday as originally planned. Uh, which will still it'll still be every Thursday. The show will still be every Thursday, uh, Thursday night uh, in UK time. Of course, early afternoon in US time. Um, so the, st- the shows will still go out every Thursday, but we're going to have between obviously the end of the show and uh, th- and Wednesday when we record the show to basically come up with an indie spotlight for next week. Um, so I've got a few ideas already, but uh, and I'm sure Owen's got a few ideas as well. Um, so it's gonna be very, very fun to see who we pick. Um, but let's get straight into this then. So that was just a little bit, first of all, talking about the changes coming to the podcast every week now. Uh, we are called Finisher FM, uh, your visual wrestling podcast. We are a video podcast. And uh, let's get started. So um, NXT Roblox 2024, very good event overall. So without getting into anything in the match specifically, Owen, overall as an event, what did you think? I think it's a brilliant show. It's it's a really roadblock is always a tough one to think, a tough one to predict as well as watch uh, to book as well because you've got to look at the standard deliver in a couple of in what less than thirty days now. Mm. Uh, obviously, their version of WrestleMania, and you've got to predict who do you want as your champions, who do you want, and it, it's set in sail for who's who's going to face who at rest at stand deliver and it's definitely showed there's a few matches either already being confirmed or on the verge of being confirmed definitely three that i cannot wait for oh my god the standard deliver for me i think this could in terms of nxt's version of wrestlemania in terms of the events they've had in the past few years i think this could be nxt's best version of their own wrestlemania in the brand's history. I generally think it's going to be up there as one of the best kind of major main event pay-per-views that NXT have done in terms of their version of a WrestleMania. I think it's one of the best ones it's looking at at the moment. Yeah, 100%. I mean, last year was brilliant with the likes of that massive ladder match start off the show, which I still was so hyped for. Yeah. Uh, me and my brother, we watched it and like see Andy Hartwell, who I've watched for years since like the way storyline. I used to love the way to see her win the title. I was so hyped to that really, really good unsanctioned match between Johnny Gargano and Grayson Waller. And that's that main event between um, Carmelo Hayes and Broad Breaker. So, but yeah, this there's, there's three or four matches that could main event. That's how massive this show is. 100 million percent. Uh, so let's get into then NXT Roadblocks. So we start off with uh, 
Chase you and the Wolf Dogs. Um, by the way, the Wolf Dogs, fantastic entrance. Um, like the, the 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 way the masks match each other, the the way the costume was designed for the two of them to look in sync was just unbelievable. Obviously, for those who don't know who the Wolf Dogs are, Baron Corbin, um, you know, a former Money in the Bank winner, I believe, former um, US champion, former United States champion, former Commissioner of Raw as well. We can't forget that storyline, even the even the storylines that people didn't like, we don't forget them. Um, and of course, Bron Breaker, in my opinion, one of the brightest stars, arguably the brightest star on upcoming on the men's developmental roster who's just come into the main roster on SmackDown. So you've got two great superstars there. Chase you. They're going through an interesting storyline at the moment with the, you know, Thea and that, with the best friends kind of breaking up a little bit. Um, and Chase you as a whole getting saved. And now what what direction they're going to go in next? It's going to be interesting to see. Um, what do you think of this one? Great tag team action. And again, Bron runs the ropes like a lightning bolt. Oh, man. I don't know how he's such a freak of a man. Who, who's someone that fast? I expect one like Nathan Fraser to do it, not Bron in Breaker. <laughs> like, come on. The guy's not real. Like, insane, by the way. Absolutely incredible. Bron Breaker, I know, I know Bron Breaker's like a, St- a Steiner son, I guess. We'll call him the Steiner son or the, or the prodigal Steiner. But he gives me vibes of a young Bill Goldberg. He, he gives oh, me yeah. vibes of a Goldberg where he's, or, or a, or a Brock, you know, a Brock yeah. or a Goldberg or someone like that, where he's this absolute beast, but he's got the speed and the agility in, in terms of the the force of speed, like a ricochet. It, it, it kind of gives me vibes of like the speed of a ricochet, but the power of a Brock or a Goldberg. Yeah, hundred percent. And yeah, like I mean, he's so free for ban, and just to see it happen. It's just getting so better, and it looked like on SmackDown as well. How well he's doing performing at the moment on SmackDown, uh, it's going to be incredible. And I, I, for one, cannot wait to see his future. Um, from San Liver up to the main roster, I can see him. Like I say, I, I could have even seen him maybe, maybe in a WrestleMania Night Two slot in a showcase match, perhaps going into you know big things on the main roster. The Chase U story I'm loving at the moment, though. I think it's really good what they're doing with JC Jane just sort of spreading the gap and sort of bullying Thea Hale, if you think about it. Yeah. And I'm hoping this could progress Thea to a really, really good storyline with JC. And yeah, Thea Hale is brilliant as well. And she's only 19, 20 as well. So she's got a long way to go. Wow. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I didn't know that. I didn't know she was like 19, 20 years old. The fact that she's only 19 years old, 20 years old, and she's doing stuff like this and yeah. already, again, we think Tiffany Stratton's, what, 25, 26, 27, something like that? Yeah, like, yeah it's like 24, yeah. Yeah, she's one of the brightest stars in the women's in women's wrestling right now in terms of future stars, in terms of re- reaching elite potential. And she's only 27. Thea's flipping 19, 20 years old. Like she's seven years younger than Tiffany and she's got a bright future as well. It's like the women women's wrestling has got such a bright future. And we want to highlight that point right from the off, even before we go into the, all the, the Paxley and Valkyrie and Roxanne Perez stuff later in the show, the women, the future of women's wrestling, not just in WWE, but I think with what AW is doing with Julia Hart at the moment. And I think with what they're doing with some of the other women superstars at the moment, timeless Tony storm, absolutely love her tony oh <laughs> tony storm give me a ticket to your next movie premiere because i would love to watch you and wendy richter get into the ring again it's uh, the best by the way the best gimmick in the past five years i'm not even lying the honestly, best gimmick god it's like a female broken matt hardy but mixed in with the classic days of wrestling like the, the yeah. golden era it's so good. And I love the fact that Luther's got something to do with this now as well, because I didn't know what direction they were going to go with Luther on AEW. But I'm glad no, that I Luther's think. a part of this. It's like the Butler-esque character. And Mariah May, another future star, again, getting taught by the likes of Tony Storm and brought up through this storyline where you just know it's going to go at some point. You know at some point it's going to... I mean, we've already had Perazzo and Storm as best mates and now bitter enemies. At some point, we're going to get a turn from either Storm or May at yeah. some point down the line. But they're building some incredible storylines in WWE, AEW, TNA, 
with the women's division only, never mind just the men, but the women's division, yeah. it's got such a bright future. It's un it's unbelievable how bright the future is for women's wrestling. And AW have done the right thing. They signed Jennifer Pepperman, I think her name is. I think so. Um, she writes for she used to write for Derby. There's some great storylines for the women there. It's gone to AEW, and already the women's division looks set. Even some of the men's storylines that she's, I believe, she, I, I presume she's helped with, is brilliant. I mean, it's the best time in, in history, really, to be a wrestling fan. This is why I hate tribalism, right? I know a bit of a tangent here, but tribal. That's why I don't like tribalism because you've got two, including TNA, New Japan, are on a bit of a lean period at the moment, but they're still. Putting out bangers Jack, after bangers. Jack Perry in the House of Justice was a surprise. Ooh, I didn't see thought, coming, yeah. but I'm intrigued to see what they do with this. <laughs> yeah, I'd be really interested if this. I think this storyline probably leads to something at Forbidden Door. I reckon you so. Would, um, could, could you imagine you the House imagine. of Justice versus what? Could you imagine one of the AW factions versus House of Justice in like a one off? Yeah. yeah. Bullet Club Bold versus House of Torture. Because remember, Bullet Club. House of Torture is still part of Bullet Club, and then you've all, and then you've got the stuff with the elite at the well, the new elite at the moment with the EVPs and you know Akada turning heel, and then you've got the opportunity for Hangman to come back, Omega to come back, um, Kota Ibushi you could involve in that. You could do a three on three there with Ibushi, Page, and Omega versus the new elite. I oh my lord! Yeah. <laughs> By the way, first off, I really hope Omega's doing okay after his yeah. Uh, Fixed lights and stuff. Very hard name to pronounce. Um, I hope you're back soon, man. It would be incredible if you would get back for all in because you, if it's you and Okada, like five from the new match would be incredible. But don't rush back, take as much time as you need, man, because you're insane and I want to see you back at 100%. So, well wishes to you, mate. And uh, I'll probably be watching your streams anyway because you're love it was a gamer. So, but get well soon to you, mate. Um, but I mean. That's what I mean. Obviously, with Roadblock and everything, NXT is just on another level. AW is on another level. Raw SmackDown is on another level. We've got The Rock coming back full time at the moment, which is insane. We're building to we're building to WrestleMania 41, aren't we? With uh, with Roman and right, it's it's, it's going to happen at 41. It doesn't have to be for the yeah. title, but it's going to be Roman versus Rock at 41, yeah. definitely. And also that tag match which looks like to be confirmed tonight. And uh, if you don't know, well, we did the WrestleMania predictions a couple of weeks ago and no one thought that this would be a tag match. It, I saw it on Friday night and immediately I woke up when I watched it and texted, texted Aaron and put, I fucking called it. <laughs> Just, I called it because insane. Um, but yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be... It's 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 just a really good time right now. Like I said, the women's division has been killing it at the moment, and um, you know we go back to the Wolf Dogs and, ch and Chase. Originally, the point we tried to make was about Chase U and the storyline coming up with them at the moment. Um, like I said, this is going to be you know a very you know interesting um, you know it's going to be interesting standing the liver for Chase U. You know what what I know obviously you know Jesse J and Thea Hale will be involved in something for standing the liver. What about the men's side of it? Andre Chase, Duke Hudson. What's going to happen to them for Stand and Deliver? I can see them maybe part. I think they're going to do multi man for the tag titles. So I mm. think they'll maybe go Fertile Four Way, Fertile Five Way, maybe. Maybe a ladder match. Okay. I, I like the sound of that. Yeah. Um, next what up, then. Is, are, we oh, yeah, yeah. Are, we, are we going to do like, the Asylum match? Yeah, 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 the asylum match is coming up. Um, I wanted to first go on about. Uh, there's a couple of things I wanted to go on about first before uh, before the asylum. We'll use the asylum as like a midpoint, and then we have okay. the main event. Yeah, no um, Sean Spears versus Uriah Connors. Now, first of all, I want to say a massive well done to Brogan Finley, aka Uriah Connors. Love the name. Um, for his live TV debut on a pay-per-view, by the way. Of course, the son of Finley. We mentioned on this show a couple of weeks ago that he sort of gave us a bit of a shout-out um, in messages privately. Um, I, I said congratulations for the work you've done with your live date with, with your live show debut. He said, top, top man, thank you very much. Um, so shout out to you, Brogan Finley, aka Uriah Connors, for your live day, your live pay per view in NXT debut uh, as Uriah Connors and Sean Spears. I mean, the way that NXT are presenting him right now compared to 
the Ty Dillinger gimmick and 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 the the levels between the two. I mean, for crying out loud, the present the presentation from NXT is spot on with this guy. They're presenting him as the as the twisted minded, hateful veteran who's got a point to prove, who's going to get that main roster spot again at some point, and they're just planning some incredible storylines for him. It looks like it's going to be him versus Rich Holland to stand and deliver us um, in some kind of match, yeah. but the way they're presenting Sean Spears is just phenomenal. Yeah, they're having a match, I believe, next week on NXT, Ridge and, and Spears. I won't imagine it'll be a full-on ending. I imagine this will be going on for a few weeks, like you say. I think maybe a, a gimmick match is stand and deliver. I really yeah. like how, like, cool, cold-spoken, really cold-blooded he is. Like, he's got an intention. Yeah. And he's basically I'll... doing this to goad Ridge Holland out, which is brilliant. I love it. It's very, it's very, it's very psychological as well as physical, isn't it? It's very yeah. much this. You know, he's trying to get inside his head and really, you know, play these mind games. And again, that's the mind of a veteran just ticking along. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, that that's what you need in NXT. You've got these brilliant young names who, obviously, some of them have never wrestled before. And then you go towards, and then you have people like Sean Spears, you die jacks even your Joe Gacy's people that have rested on the indie scene for a decent amount of time. And they're, and they're up there to give those young, young, give the people coming up their experience and it shows in the ring. Yeah. hundred, hundred million percent. And again, shout out to your icons as well. Cause it, he did, he did look good in the ring to, uh, on that night. Yeah. hundred percent, man. Congrats to you, mate. Um, I cannot wait to see more of you in NXT and, and beyond, hopefully. Yeah, me me too. Same goes for me as well. Um, next then, the Kabuki Warriors retained as Perez made a turn. And we called it heel turn perfection. Um, and I think that, you know what? I don't think she turned straight away. I think the, the, the moment we saw the full heel turn was the snapping of the arm. That yeah. was the that was the full heel turn moment. That was the, you know, that was the moment where I mean, before that we were sort of thinking, oh, is there a moment where she's going to realise how aggressive she's been? And then the snap of the arm. That's when we saw there was no good left in Roxanne Perez. Oh, I mean, it's been boiling the last couple of weeks, and like you say, I mean, since that triple, th- uh, since that match with Lola Vice and Valkyria at Vengeance Day, obviously got turned into a triple threat due to the contract. It's been brewing. I'm really loving Roxanne's character at the moment. I think, I'm I'm going to be honest, it did grow a bit stale after Sand Liver last year, her face character. they She needed some sort of facelift. It's worked. I think this heel turn looks like it's, um, by the start of it, looks like brilliant. She's, she can do that heel character. It's got similarities to me, a bit like AJ Lee. Obviously, yeah. in my opinion, they are similar. Um, but yeah, I, I would love to see AJ make a cameo, even if it's not wrestling capacity about this. It'd be brilliant to see her do something like that. Just a pass. I torch. swore I saw something on social media this week that she's helping train the rock ahead of his WrestleMania return. I think that's from like th- like five, six years ago. I think that's from the fight in my family. Right. I believe. I don't I don't think that's from um the past. I don't think it's from the last sort of week or so. But she has been uh, training, she trained for Hills. Um, yeah. I don't know if, if that's continued at all. Uh, maybe she's tra- maybe hopefully she might be training with Punk due- before the Royal Rumble, maybe getting him fit again. Um, so you never know what, what's going on with her. I'll just even if it's just a non wrestling role to pass a torch, wouldn't mind with that. But I mean, Roxanne's brilliant. I cannot wait. And she, my opinion, she should probably win the title. I uh, should win the title, stand deliver, and start maybe six months as a heel champion. Same as what Bron Breaker did, right? We all thought he would, he would go straight up after Sand and Liver. He's made yeah. his character a lot better as a heel, and now he's sort of a tweener. And look what he's done now. He's 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 so much fleshed out more than he was a year ago. Yeah, hundred percent. Now I'm going to put a theory out there. Well, not a theory. I'm going to put a creative booking idea together and see what you think about this. Because I've had a bit of time to think about this. For Roxanne Perez, I mean, I'm going to use this as an example. Toxic Attraction, Mandy Rose, NXT Women's Champion. 
you had Gigi Dolan and JC Jane with her. Yeah. Um, I've got an idea about how to present Perez as a heel champion. And this is, I don't know the name, I don't know what the name of this is going to be yet, but I've got a another three women stable um, to present her as a champion, but also make the other two look just as good. So my idea is Roxanne Perez, and then at either side you've got JC Jane, but you've also got Tate and Paxley. Yeah. And I think those three, as a psychotic threesome stable, would be an excellent way to present Perez as the psychotic champion and Paxley and Jane as the two wicked sisters that are just as psychotic and still just as good. Because then you've got the opportunity to pass those WWE Women's Tag Team titles down to NXT and give that whole stable a full clean sweep of yeah. women's championship gold. Because what you can also do is allow them onto the main roster, give them a little bit more seasoning. Yeah. On the main roster, give that a little bit of experience. Plus, there's so many more teams in NXT you can defend the titles against. Exactly. And you know what? You hit the nail exactly on the head why I've done this as a, as a three-way stable with Jane uh, Perez as the champion and Paxley. Is because I think all three of them, they're not quite at the level to be permanently on the main roster. But if you, like you said, you give them that seasoning, you've got an opportunity to give them a taste of what it's like, even if, let's say, Survivor Series War Games, even if you did Bailey and then, let's say, four, uh, four other women, and then you did on the other side, a combination of damage control and this new threesome stable with one of the damage control members at ringside, you've got a five on five women's war games match right there for this year. So, yeah, I mean, it could be any four women with Bailey. You could do Bailey, you could do Valkyrie, of course, you could do Becky Lynch, um, you could include another woman from NXT, and then you can include a returning Charlotte Flair as a face, maybe. So, you or maybe do five even, on five, yeah. Or maybe even if you say that five on five, instead of maybe damage control, if she's fit, a returning core jade. I like that. I love that. And you know what? My ultimate dream personally would be to have the Survivor Series War Games pay per view, but I would like NXT to have a War Games pay per view. Because if they're not going to have any NXT talent make a one off appearance on Survivor Series War Games, I'd love to see an NXT War Games match or a War Games pay-per-view yeah. for NXT. And that's just my personal wish as, as someone who wants to... As someone who would book it personally, I would have an NXT War Games and a Survivor Series War Games. So the main roster and the developmental roster both get a taste of the, the pound of flesh that is stripped away from the steel demolition known as War Games. I'd percent love War Games. It's one of my um, favourite places of the year, so... Yeah, and so like yeah. I said, with the, with the, if you're going to do an NXT War Games as well, you could then have this three-way stable plus a returning Cora Jade and another heel, and then you have five faces. You have Val uh, Lyra, Val Lyra Valkyrie. You can then have um, maybe Thea Hale, maybe. Yeah. You know, as, as, as a face. Uh, Tate and Paxley. Uh, Tate and Paxley. Um, Fallon Fallon Henley. Henley. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then you could even bring back the old Unholy Dawn as like a one-off um, face yeah. return to NXT. And then you've got your five-on-five five NXT Women's War Games match for an NXT War Games pay-per-view specifically for NXT as the main roster have theirs at the same time. So again, yeah. we're bringing up all these ideas together because we're thinking, aren't we? We're thinking, you know, step by step, what can we do? What can we see them do? What we would like them to do? Um, so there's a bright, bright future in store for everyone involved in this. The Kabuki Warriors will obviously go back to the main roster now and do their thing with the women's tag team titles, probably at WrestleMania. Um, but for Paxley, for uh, for Lyra Valkyrie, for uh, Roxanne Perez, just beginning for Stand and Deliver. 100%. I cannot wait. Yeah. And you know what? Either Pax is going to turn at Stand and Deliver or something's going to happen at Standard Deliver that's going to be a major, whether that's a title change or some kind of turn. I think something's going to happen. Yeah, 100%, man. And I, like I say, I, for one, cannot wait to see what goes on, not just at Standard Deliver, but the fallout from it. Absolutely. Right then, let's book ourselves 
a meeting in the asylum. Joe Gacy and Dijak. This rivalry, in my opinion, is one of the most gruesome, but also one of the most twisted rivalries in the history of NXT. And I don't say that because I'm a hype man. I say that because of what I see. And what I saw in that asylum was brutal. Yeah. I mean, you're looking at Dijak and, and Joe Gacy, right? They're both people that have, have, have been in this sort of place for years. Dijak's been in a is been in the in the business for just over ten years now. Uh he was in Ring of Honor, Frontier Wrestling, going into NXT. Joe Gacy, the re, this match suited him to a T. He's Joe Gacy's from like a, a, a sort of death match background. CZW, that sort of area. So yeah, he made that happen. And I mean, some of the spots in there were insane. And I mean, <laughs> fair play to them for doing it. Uh, these last two matches on Vengeance Day and on Roadblock, it's been incredible. And I, for one, cannot wait to see what both people do next. I say Dijak versus maybe um, Dijak for the North American title. Maybe put him in that scene. I mean, that could be very interesting. I'll be honest with you. I think we're going to get the ending of this Gacy Dijak feud at Standard Deliver. I don't think they're going to move him on yet. I think we're going to get the well, conclusion. What else can feud. you do though? Like, what else? You've had an asylum. You've had no disqualification. What else are you going to do? Like, I don't know. What, there was what, one like thing. A, a well, you, match. Like, what are you, what are you well, going to do there? Well, to be honest with you, I think you just said it. I think with Gacy's previous experience in a death match, I think they go balls to the wall and go for a death match. Are they going to do that though? I, I just, I think, I just don't I, you think, know what? I, I just don't think it fits WWE though. It just doesn't fit a death match. Well, you well, know what? Hardcore I, match. I don't know. Well, 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 you know what? I think WWE. To be honest with you, I think WWE has the creativity to put their twist on a death match. I don't think they're going to dramatize it. I don't think they'll. Exp- I don't think they'll. They'll sports entertainment the death match. But I, what I think they will do is they'll they'll go hard with it, but they won't go you know, emergency intensive care levels like you see in backyard I mean, wrestling and independent I, wrestling. I think I they'll mean, go to a level with it, but I could see them do yeah. putting a creative spin on their take on an NXT death match. So it could even be a case of, um, you know, or they, or they could they could even do a buried alive match if they want to, to try and yeah. put an end to it, or or a casket match. You know, something maybe something tight like that. Casket match tie in with two K twenty four. Exactly. Exactly. That's an, that's another reason why a casket match is a possibility. They could they could go buried alive. They haven't. I don't. To my knowledge, they've not done a buried alive match in NXT history. So again, that's no. a, that's a first for the last brand. time I believe we've had a buried alive match was twenty eleven. Exactly. So and that and that was that was PG times. You know, we're talking TV fourteen now, so they can definitely do a buried alive match at some point. Yeah, um, and it's on I, streaming as well. You should be able to. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, but for me, my prediction, if WWE can do it in a more in a creative way that they can spin round it, I think they can do some kind of death match. And I think that would suit Gacy to a T, but I think they could give Dijak the victory on that one. Hundred percent. Um, but yeah, overall, if you could name three of your favorite spots in that silent match, what would you pick and why? The moon salt. Yeah, that was brilliant. Has to be. Um Funny spot for me was when Dijak was coming to and trying to open the do not open box and then just gets <laughs> a punch in the balls. Uh, and was, then for was, me, that, that was like that was like Mark Hamill Joker vibes, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like it was like, it's like he, the classic he's that Joker character. From, I love it. Yeah, it's like, it's like it kind of reminded me of the Joker from DC yeah. Universe versus Mortal Kombat video game. It's like you were supposed to die when the clown exploded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then it's got to be the it's got to be when his eyes were closed and he still was continuing to try and get out of that feast your eyes and then obviously into the table as well like oh. some insane stuff and I thought yeah like, I mean there's definitely going to maybe be something at the end of this match but we do not, at the end of this road but we do not know I, I do think though stand, I, for me I think standard deliver is the final chapter for these two in terms of their rivalry whether they get back together as a team or not down the line I don't know what the plan is long term but I think in terms of a rivalry between the two, I think Stan and Deliver is probably the final chapter. Yeah. I mean, it, it'd be insane. I don't know how they can top that, but, you know. I think we've caught with some ideas that they can definitely pick out. Um, 
Fallon Hanley versus uh, Blair Davenport. Again, this was a decent match by two very good up-and-coming women in the division. Yeah. Um, two women who have had their moments and I think could definitely make it long-term as long as they avoid it, things like injuries, you know, creative roadblocks, etc. in terms of I their mean, character. I've I've seen Blair Davenport since, God, uh, I think the first time I saw her was WCPW and World of Sport. I think that's the first time I ever saw her um, I my my was through her through when she was um dating Will Osprey, for example. That's yeah. how I got to know watching her first. And fun fact: the way how this match was filed between Fallon Henley and Blair Davenport was them arguing about Thea Hale to Riley Osborne. If people don't know, in real life, Blair Davenport and Riley Osborne are engaged. <laughs> In real life, so it's quite an like when you're like when you know what what happens in like real life, it's just quite weird when you're watching like a TV, like you say watching this like, and you're just like your your brain's just like what is going on here sometimes. But yeah, <laughs> um, but I mean, Blood and Pot, I've watched it, it's like 2017, 2018, and she's gone leaps and bounds. She had a brief spell in AW, but because of COVID, it got curtailed because she did a lot of stuff in Japan for yeah. Stardom, for example. Um, and then, like I mean, she's she's gone on new leaps and bounds now. Has uh, joined NXT UK, joined NXT, and yeah, I mean, she's going to be incredible. And I cannot wait to see her, you know, go up to the main roster and just do incredible things because she's seasoned already. She's had so much big experience in Japan, in America, in England. She's ready. Yeah, hundred million percent. And it was a fantastic match as well between the two. Um, yeah. Again, if you could pick out any of your favorite spots, what would you pick out and why? I think the favourite spot for me has to be the end of the match, the return of yeah. Sol Ruka. That was brilliant. That was a fantastic way to announce that return. I think that Sol coming back in the fashion that she did was a was a nice... I think we could tell by the vignettes, you know, in the week before, et cetera, or the weeks before, that we, it was Sol Ruka, definitely. Yeah, and I mean, it's going to take a little bit more time because she is very young herself. Her finisher, though, is insane, so... She yeah. can prove everything else. Well done to her. And I cannot wait to see her. But all the all the people from her past, Blair Devonport's past, that she's attacked in the uh before she came back, attacked in the uh the famous NXT parking lot, all coming back to haunt her. Yeah, absolutely. Um are we gonna get Davenport versus Ruka at Stand and Deliver? Maybe on the pre-show. I could see it maybe happening on the pre-show. Or the or potentially the pre-show or the NXT before uh, like yeah. the pre-NXT be- episode before Stand and Deliver. Yeah. Okay, I think that's fair enough. Um, but ultimately, then uh, William Regal returns and his son, the NXT Heritage Cup champion. First of all, can I just say this in terms of the NXT Heritage Cup? Noam Dar did well to hold that trophy and the storyline with him and his group. Um, but I think that the time was right to make a change in terms of who holds that cup. And I could not think of anyone better at this moment in time than Char- than, than Charlie Dempsey. And the moment on telly in Roadblock when we saw him and his father, surely at some point they're pointing towards Regal managing his son at some point. Oh, 100%. I mean, to see like him go and say when he said, I hope you defend it with pride or I think I've got exactly what he said. Yeah. And then, then, and then Dempsey come up with better than you will, than you ever would or something. I was like, but I mean, they, they're using the no catch cause, aren't they? Or the quarter catch cause, they're calling it where like Dempsey's the champion, but they're all going to defend it. Yeah. I think that's, I think that might be the case here with this particular group, but Either way, I think that Dempsey potentially even leaving that group at some point and just being Regal's um, sort of wrestler with Regal as his manager, yeah. I think that long term, I think that's the direction they're going to go in. Hundred percent. I mean, technically he's brilliant, and you could tell on, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Wednesday or Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, he start. He's so he's good on the mic too, as well as a, as well as in the ring. So, yeah, I mean. I cannot wait to see what he does going forward. Yeah, it, it's gonna be um it's gonna be fantastic um to see what happens down there. Right then, the the finale, the the, the, the it, this this match, it went from one match to decide who goes to stand and deliver, and it turned it into two booked matches. 
for stand and deliver, which we, we kind of knew about already. Yeah. Um, so for those of you who haven't seen it, uh, by the way, if you don't want spoilers, skip forward a few seconds. Tony D'Angelo will be facing Ilya Dragunov for the NXT Championship at Stand and Deliver. But we are getting Carmelo Hayes versus Whoop That Trick. Whoop, whoop that yeah. trick. Whoop. Oh my God, that ending. The, the match um, itself, first of all, was fantastic. But the ending afterwards as well, where Trick comes back yeah. and the Don's like, I got a special gift for you. It's a special gift from the Dan. Whoop That Trick comes out. Yeah. And Hayes is in disbelief. Yeah. By the way, I, I like to go back to um, the NXT War Games when they did Team Black and Gold versus Team 2.0. You look at the four members that were making part of Team 2.0, and they have done or five, if you count Trick, who was with Carmelo. Trick, obviously, going to be, which I believe will be the main event with Trick Melo. I think... I think Mello and, and, and Trick will main event the show. Unsanctioned match, I imagine yep. it will be. Uh, Brom, uh, I think it was five, actually. It might have been five or five. Brom Breaker, obviously, yep. going to SmackDown, NXT Tag Team Champion, NXT Champion, one of the best in this past couple of years. Grayson Waller, best one of the best mics, brilliant. And in my opinion, the most underrated part of this, Tony D'Angelo. I mean... I mean, he's he's brilliant. He's, he's, he's brilliant. It's very fleshed out. I thought the funny thing is, right, because Tony D'Angelo is, called, of course, the Don of NXT. Any of you who watch Gore and Perkins, who are a brilliant YouTube channel on, on, on you know, they do brilliant universe modes. They had a character. I think they recreated Big Cass as the Don. I love the fact the Don is now in real life as yeah. Tony D'Angelo. And I love yeah. the fact... The, you know, the whole thing with the family over the last couple of years and things like that. The way that D'Angelo has played his character to a flipping T and with the family around him as well, he's been, in my opinion, I don't know what you think, Owen, but for me, he's been one of the most underrated male superstars oh, in the current NXT setup. 100%. I mean, you could tell he's fleshing out his family by, like, building a group around him. I think it, it would suit really well for when he's champion. Like it's gonna suit well when he's because I I personally think he's going to win the title, um because you've got the underboss, you've got the I'm gonna absolutely butcher this the Casigliere of of Tony Cascarino which love him, and then you've also got um and I forgot her name as well. Um, you you have to be yeah. fair. In addition though, you've also got Luca Cristiano who's joined. Yeah, Luca well. Cristiano. That's what I was thinking of. Sorry, Luca Cristiano. And you've also got like you've got Chris Farno, and then you've also got um yeah, I mean you've got him, you've got you've got the family is some of the best parts I've ever I've seen in this in this. It's just incredible just to see new people. And I mean to, to, to sort of flesh NXT out is brilliant and I cannot wait to see it happen. I mean you've got Yeah. Yeah. I just it, forgot who was who else is in the um, Sometimes so, just so you've got so you've got Tony D'Angelo, you've got Channing Stax Lorenzo, yeah. Adriana Rizzo, and Luke Rizzo. Cristino. That's what I was thinking of. Rizzo, I just forgot her name. Sorry, I'm a bit tired. But the wild sorry. thing is though, the, the wild thing is though, in terms of former members, because the, the faction the family faction only debuted two years ago. Well, um, yeah. I think I think it's I think exactly it was nearly two years ago. Um, as far as I'm aware. In fact, I've just got this here actually. Um, so Tony D'Angelo debuted uh, on October the 5th on NXT 2021. And the in terms of the family, um, they, I believe, came in uh, not too long after that. So we're talking here about... Um, June, 20, June 2022. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they haven't been long together at all. And the way that they've, and you look at, like I, said, I was going to say this as well, you look at some of the former members on there, Legado del Fantasma and Troy Donovan and Electra Lopez, to name just a few. I mean, that's amazing that the family's been through so much and it's only been like two years. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, just to have two years of that. That storyline with Legado was brilliant going into the end of their run in NXT. And now 
I mean, it's getting even bigger with Rizzo and uh, and, and Luca Cascarino. Still don't know how people pronounce people's names. <laughs> but yeah, I'm terrible at names and I'm very tired. Sorry, everyone. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, incredible to see it all fleshed out. And I kind of, like I say, I think he's going to be champion and I can't wait to see it. Yeah, I think he, it's again. It's like it's like that brain moment. It's like that Bray Wyatt elimination chamber twenty eighteen moment where it's like you deserve it. Yeah, you deserve it. Also, um, uh, are we gonna? Can I just have a little bit of a chat while we're talking about that about the three? The Hall of Fame got announced this week, didn't they? You, yes, you put it on your Let's talk about it. I mean, first yeah, of all, before we'll we go on to the main, yeah. Cool. Yeah, can we, can we start with Bull Nakar now? Because, yeah, go for it. Because, in my opinion, she is one of the most underrated women superstars of all time. She is a legend in Japan. She is a legend around the world. And she paved the way for so many women around internationally in professional wrestling. So, first of all, to Bull Nakar now, massively well done, so well deserved. Should have happened before this, but I'm glad it's happening now. Oh, 100 percent I could like I say, I can't wait to see her. And I mean, to see her get applauded. It's, oh, 100 percent Did you say there was three? Yeah, there was another one that got announced today. Um, Who did they announce? I've not seen it. Please, it's my live reaction right now. Right, let me because sometimes I'm a bit confused with names. It's it's um it's an older tag team. All right, okay. Um, let me quickly get it up. This it is so obviously we've got Paul Heyman, yeah, Paul Nakano, and the US Express. Fantastic choice, fantastic choice. Multiple people, time world, yeah. world tag team champions. They're a yeah. legendary name. I believe they competed in the first WrestleMania. Yes, they act. Yes, they did as well. So a really good time going into the 40th anniversary. Um, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Barry. If people don't know the US Express, it's Barry Windham and Mike Rotunda. Yes, people don't know. Uh, he's he was the dad. He is or was the dad of uh, Bray Wyatt and the dad of and the dad at the moment of of, of Bo Dallas. Um, but brilliant tag team. Uh, he was also IRS as well. Yeah. So so he did a really good career. And obviously, really happy to see them. Um, be attacked, be, be inducted into Hall of Fame this year. Absolutely. I, I, you know, I really wish Bray was around to see his father get inducted with the US Express. And obviously, you know, Barry Windham as well. Um, you know, he was a big part of that whole, you know, rotunda setup and things like that. So he, he again, he's a, he's another one that, you know, we'll miss Bray every day like we all do. And, um, you know, it feels just right for the US Express to be inducted this year, especially with them competing in the first WrestleMania as well. Yeah. Um, and then you had the final one, of course, the first one that was announced, you know, and the headliner of uh, of this year's Hall of Fame, a man who deserved it years ago. And it's it's it feels like the right time to get it as well when you look at what's happening with the bloodline at the moment. Paul Heyman, a wise man, an advocate, a promoter, a businessman, a pioneer, a leader, a promo king. Yeah. Like when I when I was a kid and I practiced promos in the mirror as a kid, I learned from Paul Heyman. I learned from the man who built ECW from the ground up to be what it was. You know, and the legacy that it left with the likes of Tommy Dreamer, the Dudley, Sandman, Rhino, Sabu. Um you know, uh, D, uh, Jerry Lynn, Dean Malenko, all these people that were involved in ECW, Taz, you know, all, yeah. all these people involved in ECW was because of the man who started it, and that's Paul Heyman, who has managed multiple, multiple champions, both in tag team division and solo competition. People like The Undertaker before he was The Undertaker, people like Brock Lesnar, people like Roman Reigns, People like even Curtis Axel, even Mr. Perfect's son was a Paul Heyman guy. Yeah. Um, you know, people like that, managed by a great like Paul Heyman. He so deserves this. And if people haven't seen it on social media yet, I did put a video out rather than a post 
when Paul Heyman got announced because I thought I had to do something personal face to face with Paul Heyman for this when I heard I heard he was getting inducted this year yeah. um, because he meant a lot to me personally. We'd never even met, but he meant a lot. To, it meant a lot to me personally. And I said it on my video on social media. The reason why he meant so much to me personally is because I learned a lot from him in terms of his confidence, in terms of the way he stands out on any kind of stage, on any kind of stadium, no matter where the stage is, and he makes it his own. And I'm inspired by what he does every single day to become who I am today. So again, from the bottom of my heart, Paul Heyman, thank you for making me be me. And you so deserve this, along with Bull Nakano and the US Express. Yeah. Exactly what you said, mate. I I, I said it on the uh, I I commented on on your post just how of an express he was for me. I mean, he's a reason why I'm so, I'm so confident talking because I saw what he said. I I I'm a bit younger, like I'm I'm 17 myself. And I'm, I so I I I'm also really around for his ACW days. But I went back, I watched them. He's insane. I mean, to to, to go out what he did in WCW and he was kicked to the curb really by WCW. Yeah, and then he went. You know what I'll do. I see this Eastern Championship wrestling. I see what they're doing with the ECW. That's making mainstream. And that's what he did. He made the mainstream. He made them the third biggest company in the US wrestling when he had juggernauts at WCW and WB and made them that little brother that everyone loved. And that's what we were. We loved ECW back in the day. And then he went on and made a brilliant career in WB. And like I say, I've never met him. I've never even talked to him on like social media or anything like that. But he's a real inspiration to, to anyone, not just in the in the wrestling business, but in business itself. Yeah, and it was and a it, very good thank you, a very big thank you, and also to Paul Nakano as well. Congrats! Some of the stuff I've seen you do with you, like in women's wrestling at that time, when women's wrestling wasn't respected, is insane. Especially that the toll and you had to on your body. Especially if you haven't seen, she did a leg drop from the top of a king. Cage. I saw that. That was, amazing, that was an amazing spot back in the day. But it's insane. The amount of leg, like the pain in her leg for doing that would have been incredible. But thank you for her for doing all the things. She's incredible. Everyone that's been nominated, uh, been inducted this year is incredible. And I can't wait to see who the next couple are going to be running off what will be an incredible Hall of Fame class. Yeah, 100%. You know what? I want to end this kind of Hall of Fame conversation by just say, just kind of uh, quote sort of quote quoting a little bit what Tommy Dreamer said during the ECW reunion. It's like you need someone to teach you the way. Dusty uh, Dusty Rhodes taught Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman taught everyone around that table. The people like Tommy Dreamer, people like the Dudleys, people like Taz. You know, everyone in ECW was taught by Paul Heyman, but he needed the teacher, and that was the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. Um, and obviously Dusty Rose needed the teacher and so forth. And you, you see the do- through the generations of wrestling, you see the domino effects start to form. You know, people, you know, managers nowadays, people like your Paul Heyman's, people like your MVPs, you know, managers nowadays, Prince Nana in AEW, you know, so many managers around, you know, professional wrestling as a whole will have had inspirations and Paul Heyman was an inspiration to so many of our up and coming managers now and so many people learned from Paul Heyman and vice versa Paul Heyman learned from loads of other people and managers around his generation will have learned from other people as well people like Captain Lou Albano people like Bobby the Brain Heenan uh, people like Mouth of the South Jimmy Hart so the domino effects of the generations fall in place one by one as the years and the decades go by. And Paul Heyman had a teacher. He teaches the next generation. They teach their next generation. The domino effects of the wrestling industry are so important. When one domino falls, it's very important you get as much knowledge in as beautiful ways you can get it to the next generation before your domino falls. That's what Paul Heyman's left as a legacy. He's left an exceptional legacy before the domino falls in his retirement at some point throughout his career. So Paul Heyman, for me, has done so much before his domino falls. He leaves that remarkable legacy. Again, I I, 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 can't, I, I can't remember if I said it in the video online or not, but I'll say it again anyway. Paul Heyman, in my opinion, is arguably the greatest manager in the modern era of professional wrestling. And in my personal opinion, he's up there as one of the greatest managers of all time. He's on, in my opinion, and I'm just being perfectly honest here, in terms of if you had a Mount Rushmore of professional wrestling managers, 
uh, which I think is four. I think, is it four or five for a Mount Rushmore? I think it's four. I four. Think. So my four, in terms of my Mount Rushmore managers, would be Paul Heyman, Bobby the Brain Heenan, Jimmy Hart, and Classy Freddie Blassie. Those, yeah. are my, those are my four in terms of of all time. In terms of managers that I have seen, either live or in the past, my Mount Rushmore that I've seen, again, includes Paul Bearer, includes Paul Heyman again. But, you know, you'd only be looking at, you know, a couple of others that have been around recent times, people like Prince Nana, for example. So, yeah. you know, I, I, you know, off the top of my head, I'm trying to think of a four that I've watched, but in terms of the four of all time, I could name my four of all time in terms of a Mount Rushmore of managers. It's classic Freddie Blassie, Paul Heyman, um, Mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart, and Bobby the Brain Heenan. Yeah. You know, you could, even, you could even make a case for... Um, Paul Bearer. Uh, Paul Bearer. Yeah. So, you know, f- for me, Paul Heyman's on the Mount Rushmore of managers of all time, along with the with the greats that have that have left this world, like your Heenan's, your Blassies, um, and you know, obviously people who are still here like Jimmy Hart, but also other managers that have come and gone like Paul Bearer. So... You know, Paul Heyman's such a pioneer in this industry, and it just, it, especially with WrestleMania being in Philadelphia as well, it just feels absolutely spot on for him to headline Hall of Fame this year. And like you said, I think he's been asked to do it in the past, but he he said he wanted to, he either wanted it to be tired or a place where it suits him. It being the first one where where it's Triple H, Paul Levesque, who's who's the one who's picking who he wants in the Hall of Fame. Really good touch, by the way. It was Paul Levesque who actually. Uh, t- uh, uh, called uh, the US Express uh, were together and told them they were being inducted. So it's a really good touch from him. He probably does it to everyone, but it's just a really, really cool touch. They put it on social media. Um, yeah. I guess they did I mean, the same with Kane and The Undertaker yeah. a couple of years ago, didn't they? Yeah. And you've got to look at, um, I mean, it being Paul of also being in Philly, where he where he's most well known. And I mean, yeah. it, it's one of the best. Like, it's a 40th anniversary. It's a big WrestleMania. And I, I like... It's just really good to see the Hall of Fame class and him being the headliner. Yeah, and Philly is well known for hardcore and, of course, Paul Heyman being the pioneer of ECW and, you know, really getting it to where it was. And, of course, they were known for their hardcore days and their hardcore matches and their hardcore promos. Uh, let You know, any of you younger fans watching, if you haven't seen hardcore before, go and watch about one hour's worth of New Jack and you'll know what hardcore is in terms of... Oh, not New Jack. Oh. Literally, New Jack is a yeah. guy who, you, who can never be shown on a PG wrestling show because he was the most non-PG performer yeah. in the history of the business. Go and watch the- an hour of New Jack, and you'll know what Attitude Era really is before WWE created yeah. the Attitude Era. Man, some of the stuff he did was insane, though. He's so unhinged. He was so unhinged. Like, if people don't know... One of the stories is he, he, he tries to kill someone once in the ring. I remember that he was did, one. yeah. I remember watching Dark Side of the Ring about that. <laughs> and also, um, it was a story where it was a house show, an ECW house show, I think it was. And it was a tag team match. Um, but I think it was Johnny, like someone couldn't make it. So they asked, so this kid in the crowd, who was 17, never wrestled in his life, had a fake ID and said he got wrestled under uh, this guy's wrestling school. And he, he got asked to blade. And he didn't know. So we asked New Jack, can you blade for me? Can, And he, New Jack went so much, he cut two of the, the kids, like the kid was 17, and he cut two of his arteries. Jesus. And yeah, he, he, didn't, ha- he didn't show any remorse for it either. He went like, he told me to do it. Like, he, 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 he didn't give a shit. Like, New Jack, that's what I mean. He did not give a shite about anything. Man, I respect re- Bitcoin, but he's a, he was a madman. Like, I mean, a rest, madman. Rest in peace, New Jack. I wish we had the chance to speak to him because, yeah. it, it, you know, the rest stories in peace. he would have had is insane. Oh, rest, rest in peace, New Jack. Just yeah. one of the, one of the underrated greats of this business. Again, if you haven't seen Hardcore before, go and watch an hour of New Jack. You'll be set up as an under. If you're under eighteen, go and watch. If you if you've got parents' permission, go and watch New Jack for an hour. Then you'll feel like you're eighteen or over. Trust yeah. me. Um, you know, people like New Jack, people like your Sandman, your Sabu, your Tommy Dreamers, your Dudleys, all these people that came through ECW, Paul Heyman 
help create a even just a section, even a big section of their legacies that they leave behind in professional wrestling. And again, with the rest of the class so far as well, with Paul Nakano being a pioneer in women's wrestling, with the US Express being one of the first major tag teams of the WWF era, shall we say, the, the, the WrestleMania era, uh, when WrestleMania first started, you know, and to be such a legendary tag team and to go on and have successful careers in the solo ranks as well. You know, it just feels like the perfect class right now. And I, I, like I yeah. said, I can't wait to see what else gets it announced. Who else gets announced for the Hall of Fame? They're all going to have a. I think they're all going to have a celebrity inductee again. They're going to have a Warrior Award winner, and I would suspect maybe one or two more spaces, maybe. Yeah, I think Warrior Awards celebrity, and I think if you're going to do a celebrity, then it'll be one more from the wrestling industry from the rest of them. So going off of that, obviously we don't we don't want to predict a uh, Warrior Award winner because I think that could go to anyone who's just an That's absolute strange. hero. Yeah, yeah, that that one's uh, the Warrior Award will go to a, anyone who is a hero in their community who's done so much, uh, and it goes to real life superheroes. So we're not going to predict the Warrior Award because that will be disrespectful. But the celebrity inductee, and if there's one more wrestling space, maybe have a bonus wrestling space. Yeah. There's two, maybe three names yet to announce. Well, bearing in mind we're in Philly for this year, who would you see as the celebrity inductee and one, maybe two last wrestling inductees and why? I'm just going to double check something. Is the Dudley boys ever been inducted? Yes, they've already been in the Hall yeah. of Fame. They were in just double checking because I, 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 so I, my brain is fried today. I, um, think they were, I, think, I think they went in the year after. They inducted Jacqueline into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I don't know really because it's it's hard because they might go with someone completely from like like the seventies, eighties, which they should do because I think it's a lot. Um, but I think it'll be. I think you're gonna go with someone from the extreme. I think EC. I think goes another one from ECW. Maybe like I say, a Tommy Dreamer, a Sandman, a Sabu, Rhino, maybe. Like someone from that sort of era, I think. Um, and what about, what about celebrity inductee? Who could you see I'm going stuck in? And on this because I, I don't know if I can see anyone from like a celebrity. Like, I don't really go to celebrities really and see make, like people because I like I don't know who's been in the business a lot. That's the problem with it. Maybe, but you know, it's it's a bit hard. They don't really use celebrities every year, so it's probably a year where they do give it a miss. But you never know. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You never know. Um, the, the, there's there's quite a few possibilities that could go with. Um, I don't know. I don't think he's been inducted yet. But personally, I'd like to see them posthumously induct the lead singer of Motorhead. Maybe. Oh yeah, that'd be that'd be really really good. I think. I think that'd be a nice Tri- way to keep especially his it legacy being Triple alive. H, especially being Triple H's um first la- one. Uh, first one. It'd be really good if maybe Motorhead. Is a celebrity inductee. I think that would be a brilliant like tribute to the legacy of their lead singer. Again, another name they could throw into the mix, Jim Johnson, the music expert of WWE, Jim Johnson. Yeah, hundred um, percent. There's there's quite a few names that could go with. Uh, we'll obviously keep an eye out for any more on that. But um, but there we go. Um, so that's NXT Roadblock. Bit about the Hall of Fame as well. Um, in terms of just any last minute kind of um, headlines, um, it could, could be a bit of a taster ready for next week. Um, I, I mean, obviously, we've got SmackDown coming up tonight as we're recording this. Uh, yeah. We'll try and get it up uh, just before SmackDown starts, but we'll, we'll try anyway. Um, <laughs> worst case scenario, it goes out the day after. So by the time we're recording this, we don't know what's going to happen on SmackDown um, in, in terms of what goes down actually on the night. Um, but. From the world of wrestling, I mean, overall, I think Adam Copeland's return on AEW Dynamite was good. Uh, Okada. Okada heel turn with the elites. You know what? I tagged the Young Bucks in a tweet on Twitter. I don't know if they've seen it yet or not. They probably might not have seen it, but I'm going to say it here right now. I know we're a Drew McIntyre fan base here on the show, um, but I am officially a Young Bucks inductee. EVP taking care of EVP business. I love it. Also, um, 
obviously we film this podcast. We will usually film this podcast on a Wednesday. Um, how so? It would be just before AEW Dynamite. Obviously, next week's big business. Maybe, obviously, the return, uh, the debut of the CEO. Give you a, a little bit of a preview. Um, brilliant if she's Absolutely. in it. I would love to see to see maybe someone with a bit of money. Um, absolute, but, absolute boss. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> we'll probably talk about it. We'll probably talk about more next week, just before the presumed arrival. Um, in Boston, yeah, just under thirty days before WrestleMania, um, mm. on the road to to Dynasty, um, in mm. AW. Will Ospreay's had two incredible matches in the past week with Revolution. Oh, so, my God. That, that match with Carl Fletcher was just majestic. Yeah. I right, mate. Like, AW's putting on bangers. Dovey's putting on bangers. Some brilliant stories, everything. So, I mean, if you are if you are listening to this podcast, you're going to listen to us absolutely rave about how big and how beautiful this wrestling business is at the moment. And I always say this. Don't just go too big. Look at your indies. As yes. Well. Look at your indies in your local area. Check them out. And if there is a local wrestler in your area or someone that you admire that doesn't get the products they deserve, please put it in the comments down below and tell us who your favorite wrestler is. We can maybe do a search on them. Maybe even do an interview with them if they, if if they would love to. Absolutely. Like like Owen said, if you've got a local indie star that you love or needs some shouting out send us it in the comment section or you can message us privately at our Twitter handles. The Twitter handle for the channel will be linked um, in the description and on the channel page. Owen's Twitter is linked in the description of each of the wrestling podcasts as well. So come and message both of us if you've got any uh, names that you want to throw out there for any of our indie spotlights coming up. Um, but Owen, I'm going to end this, as we mentioned, Will Ospreay, with, an, with this, a, another quick Paul Heyman story. So... This was about six, seven years ago. People may have seen this clip. People may not have. Uh, but Paul Heyman did an inside the ropes kind of live, live session. And yeah, he, he, he called up Mr. Osprey. And he kind of offered him an evolved contract once he's done all his stuff in Britain at the time. Um, and basically, you know, often the chance if he wants to go to America to compete with Evolve. And if I, am I correct, he turned down the contract? Yeah, because uh, he ended up, I believe it was because he was doing stuff with Ring of Honor. I believe yeah. it was part of, because New Japan had a big relationship with Ring of Honor at the time. So that's why he did it, obviously. But still, and to get a silly beautiful by someone like Paul Heyman, for example, is brilliant. Yeah, and, and like we said, you know, Ring of Honor, ties with New Japan. And I, I think, as we say, the rest is history, right, with Will Ospreay? Yeah. I mean, to, like, I mean, if you look at it, to go from what he's done, I mean, he was a junior. He, he, he started with the Swords of Essex. with, uh, And then he's he, like he's gone from wrestling in town halls and leisure centres in, in things people in like, to that, to wrestling at Madison Garden. The Tokyo Dome, mm. and now week in week out, um, putting on banger matches in AEW, the best in the world, and he's already been to Wembley Stadium as a wrestler. Who knows? And he's coming, and he's coming back to Wembley this year, maybe as a main eventer. Main event in August at Wembley Stadium would be insane. And that would be mental. And if I'm if I'm if I'm not wrong as well, if we've got a bit of an announcement on the show because you're gonna be at AW All In. Yeah, I, I mate, I cannot wait for it. Um it'd be my first, it'd be one of my first first time I couldn't go last year. This would be the first time going to an AW show. I mean, it's gonna be insane. I'm gonna probably lose my lose my voice at the end of the show because I um, <laughs> to see see people I've been watching for years, you know. Your Adam Copeland's, your Brian Danielson's, Will Ospreay, who I found out through WCPW or Defiant Wrestling. Um, if, like, I mean, to, to see some of the people, hopefully Darby Allen as well. And good luck to Darby on your Mount Everest push, by the way. Yes. I hope you do well, mate. Um, just to see these people that I've, like, you know, loved and to, to now be able to watch them live and sing their theme song. 
and you know, <laughs> Chan and I, like, mate, it's going to be insane. And yeah, I mean, I for one cannot wait for that. It's I know it's 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 about it's still it's about five six months away, but you know, you just build your excitement for it. Yeah, hundred million percent. Obviously, you're going to be at AW All, and you're also going to be at Rev Pro in April. Am I correct? Yeah, Epic Encounter 2023, uh, 2024. I will be there. Um, so can't wait again. Rev Pro is going to be insane. Uh, Rev Pro is biggest big promotion in the UK. I mean, they do insane matches. So I for one cannot wait to see it. They they do some brilliant shows in my local area. So um, for one of my first times going there. And yeah, going to see some incredible pro wrestling. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to try and make it to a few indie shows throughout the year um, uh, in my area as well. I will try my best to try and make it to All In, but it's going to be very, very difficult. Um, but I will try my absolute best. Uh, if WWE comes to Sheffield as well at some point this year, which I'm sure they will do for a live show at some point, again, I'll try and make it. Um, so we're going to try our best to get some content from some of these events, etc. We'll try our absolute best anyway. Um, we can only do so much this year with it being our first year of the show. Uh, and we'll, we'll just keep growing it until we, you know, we get to a point where, you know, we'll be doing a lot of content from the show. So, uh, it's going to be very, very, very exciting for our first year to, to go to some of these shows and, uh, and experience them and deliver some, some some reviews etc but um but there we go that's the first official episode under the new name uh, i think it's our seventh or eighth show overall but um it's gonna be fantastic we're looking forward to doing these shows with you guys every when uh, every uh, thursday recorded every wednesday and uh, like i said if, if you've got any indie spotlight suggestions comment down below or tweet us privately using the links in the description but thank you very much owen thank you very much for coming once again no worries, man. All good to see. All good to to, to do this again. Can't wait again to do it next week. Or like like uh, Aaron has said, go down in the comments uh, if you want to uh, tell us about your your favorite indie wrestler, and uh, so we just spotlight for you. And everyone, good night and too sweet. Too sweet. Thank you very much. To Rafa now.